Hi everybody. So today's subject is does being paranoid or having a victim mentality make you more appeasing to the criminal? Let's get into it. Coffee's almost done. Have you ever woke up and wondered what was wrong with you? You knew you wanted to be elsewhere, that there was more to life than the life you were living, more than the bills you were paying, the job you were keeping. Look to the horizon, to the sunsets. Your answer is there. Put your feet on the ground and take a deep breath and step into the nomadic lifestyle. You will not regret it. Hi, it's still learning to adjust this camera. It's driving me crazy. So anyway, today before we get into the main subject, um, I promised some of my viewers that commented that I would go into some of the stuff that happened to me while I was out boondocking. And today I would like to address rangers, <laughs> okay, because I've seen so many comments that goes, well, there's rangers out there, they patrol, yada, yada, yada. Well, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, fresh coffee, right? Anyway, ladies, my first my first boondocking, I was only out on the road about three days, and I decided to hit the Grand Canyon, as it was in September, and Arizona is still a little toasty in September. Beautiful, beautiful site. I got one of the most beautiful campsites, and I'm up there, and I go to call my ex-husband because he made me promise I would check in everywhere I go to give him my site number and um, how to find me, my coordinates. And so I did, and I called him before I actually went all the way in. I found my site, turned around to go back, and at that point I got on my phone and I called him and I said, I'm at camps, campground area, da 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 da, and I'm at site, yada yada yada. And I sent him my coordinates. Now, probably about four days in, about the same time my tire got cut, my ex-husband hadn't heard from me for two, three days. Now, when I finally got parked and got everything set up, I realized I had no cell service, none. Zada, not a zip. I couldn't call. I couldn't text. I couldn't get online. Nothing. Now, I've been told by some major channels <laughs> that my cell service would reach out there. This is a perfect example, ladies, why we cannot believe everything that the glitter and pony people put out there. It's just not true. We never know when we're going to be in a place that our cell phones get absolutely no reception, regardless of who you're with. So, on with the story. So he called the ranger station and he said, my ex-wife is up there. She's alone. I haven't heard from her in a couple days and I'm worried seriously about her. Could you please do a well check? Well, of course, they're very kind and considerate. They took all the information and they told him they would check on me and get back to him. Well, he said two days go by. The morning of the third morning, he called them back. And they said to him, oh, we, we haven't got out there yet, but we're going to go check. You guys, three times my ex-husband called the rangers back. They never, ever came to my site to inquire if all was well. Now, that's kind of a frightening story, especially if you're a single nomadic woman, whether you're in a van or you're in an RV. But the fact is, is we can't always even count on the rangers to make sure that we have safety. The fact is, I was out there 10 days, 12 days, 12 days and never once during that whole time seen a ranger, let alone did they come out after I was there just five days and any time after to check on me. So with that being said, we have to realize that some of these stations that just want you to go back to view and view and view and view while they're filling your head with cotton candy and glitter, they're not telling you guys the truth. And I'm sorry to say that. And I fell for their, I fell for their lollipops and glitter. 
But the fact is, is I now know the truth and I'm going to share it with you ladies. That time when I was at the Grand Canyon, I had a lot of things happen to me up there, including who I called the Pie Piper of the Grand Canyon. That's the story I'll get into at another time. I woke up after being there four days, and it was during the time I couldn't speak to my ex-husband with my tire slashed. Now, the reason I hadn't noticed it earlier is I had covers on them. I was using towels at the time because I hadn't had time or the money to purchase wheel covers. And within... The next nine days, that tire had gotten so low, I had to leave. Now, I hit the nearest gas station, okay? And I put a dollar worth of quarters in this tire pump, and my tire never got above 50 pounds of pressure. And I was frustrated, and I thought I was doing it wrong. And the fuel delivery came, a big old diesel truck. And I pulled him to the side and I said, sir, can you please help me? I said, I'm not understanding why this air machine won't blow up my tires. And he looked at me and said, how many pounds of pressure are in your tires? And I said, they take 80. And he said, lady, that will never blow up your tires. Because see, ladies, something is so easy and so simple as this that a regular gas station cannot blow up a tire beyond 50 pounds of pressure. Nobody ever told me that, not here on YouTube. I've never read it anywhere. I had no clue, none. You have to go to a truck stop or someplace that's able to handle bigger tires. So if you have a tire on your car that, that holds 60 pounds of pressure, your RV, your class A, B, C, you're only gonna get 50 pounds of pressure. If you have an 80 pound pressure like I did, <laughs> you're going to get 50 pounds of pressure because the pressure in the pump is not significant enough to blow up your tire. You guys, this also goes for those little compact ones that you can get to air up your tire off your battery. If it doesn't go up to the amount of pressure you need for your tire, it's not going to blow up your tire to the full amount. Did I limp down that hill on 50 pound pounds of pressure? <laughs> you know I did. And that's how I got out of that mess. But I had to go to a truck stop any time after that, after I replaced that tire. But any time I wanted to check my tires and put air in my tires on my Class C, it took 80 pounds of pressure. You guys, some of those Class A's, some of those big um, uh, travel trailers, the bigger the tire, the more pressure. My Class A held 120 pounds of pressure, you guys. It took a really big air compressor. So before I get into my uh, area about does be paranoid or <laughs> have a victim mentality make you the victim? Does it make you more attractive to the criminal? I wanted you to know these little tidbits of safety information. You can't always count on rangers. And now you know the trick about your tires, right? Now let's get into the main subject. I hope you guys enjoyed that. You won't find that information anywhere else here on YouTube, by the way. So anyhow, I have had hundreds and hundreds of comments, and I've had negative comments, and I've had a lot of comments trying to convince you, my viewers, why I am lying, and it's safe to go out and boondock. I have been told that I have a victim mentality and that I'm paranoid. And thus I brought it on myself. No. Right? I know. Like being raped is because of the way you dress. So, with that being said, now we look at little children who are abducted. And this is an example. They're abducted, they're raped and molested or whatever. Do did they bring themselves into that situation because they had a victim mentality? I've never seen a paranoid child. How about a uh, little house on the road? Their, their rig was burnt to the ground. Now, I've watched many of that gentleman's videos, and I see nothing about being paranoid. And I see absolutely nothing about him having a victim mentality. So... When we talk about 
the true dangers out there. Uh, I'm not lying to you. I have no reason to lie. And I'm putting it out there because I've never seen people put this stuff out there. They want your view. They want you going there and living the dream through them. And I get it. I used to. But when it comes to putting somebody's life on the line to put money in your pocket, I call them scumbags. The fact is, is you are not going to draw a criminal to you with any kind of attitude. You can walk as the biggest, baddest, sorry, bitch in the world with guns on your hips. And if there is something about you or something about you that they want, your rig, your, your photo equipment, your money, they, they're going to get it. Or they're going to try damn hard to get it. So ladies, don't let anybody convince you that I have a, a victim mentality or I'm paranoid and thus is why I, all this stuff happened to me. I am anything but a victim. <laughs> anything. Now, did I treat my stalker any different than I did any other stranger that I was boondocking with? No. As a matter of fact, he was kind of creepy and I was standoffish. Did I encourage him in any way? Oh, hell no. Did I let that man in my rig? No. Never let anybody in your rig. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. For many reasons. And we'll go into that if I got a minute left. But you never let anybody in your rig. Did I give him trust when he shouldn't have had it? No. No. As a matter of fact, this guy knew I had guns because I had gone out shooting with one of my neighbors that day. This man knew that I had bear mace because when I went out walking, I carried it on my hip. This man knew I had a knife because again, when I went out walking, I had my knife on me as well as a weapon in a concealed holster. Now, did I come off as a victim? No. Did I have a victim mentality? No. Am I paranoid? Just because I carry a weapon, just because you carry a weapon, be it a club, bear mace, gun, knife, does not make you paranoid. It makes you prepared. And that's what all my videos are about, you guys. Being prepared. Because that's knowledge. That's absolute knowledge. Just like, don't count on the rangers. And you can't air up your tire at a regular gas station. Those are knowledges I never had. I never had it until I went out. Absolutely. Now, the fact that I wouldn't let anybody in my rig, that was just common sense to me. That was just absolutely common sense to me. The fact that I had a big dog. You know what, guys? I love that dog. She was the biggest sweetheart in the world. And no, she didn't bark. She didn't growl. She didn't bite nobody. But the fact is, is even with the dog, it didn't deter the stalker. I didn't have problems with just the stalker. I had five other men that every time I walked out on my rig, if it was to gas up my generator, check my oil, walk my dog, take out trash, that were around my rig like flies. So ladies, when I say to you, be aware. I'm not kidding. Any one of those five guys could have been just as dangerous as the idiot that ended up stalking me. Unbeknownst to us. See, I talked to the guy, the, the sergeant who's ahead of my stalker case. And I asked him, I said, is there any way the normal human being can tell if somebody is off in the head? If they're a stalker, a raper, a murderer, a robber, an arsonist. And he said, no. The reason that it's so hard to solve crimes is because the criminally insane blend in so well with society. How do you guys think that mass murderers can go years without being caught? How come you think there's so many cold case files or Jane Doe, John Doe cases of people that's never even been identified? let alone their murderer found. I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm telling you 
straight out, no matter what these mega channels say, because I'm not monetized at this time. There are dangers out there, you guys. There are serious dangers. And my videos, I'm going to make a series of them, are going to teach you ways not only that I get out of it, but how I avoided it. There's some scary stuff up there. Some scary stuff. And I don't think that there's a woman out there who has the, the mentality of a victim. I don't know a woman out there that walks around paranoid. I'll tell you what, once you've had a baby, it takes all the sissy out of any woman I've ever met. Just saying. So ladies, we know that we're strong in spirit and strong in mind. Let's be strong in knowledge. Don't fall for these super channels that want you to gang up in a bunch of group of women to go learn to be nomadic. Because they have never taken the time to even tell you on YouTube that you can't air up your RV tire at a regular gas station. Just saying. And to all those comments about how I, I was a victim mentality or I was paranoid and that's why the troubles that I had came upon me. Get a grip. Get a grip. That's like a rape victim being blamed for being raped because of the way she was dressed. Just saying. So next, my next video will be about snakes, scorpions. Oh yeah, tarantulas, you guys, rattlesnakes, um, mice, ticks, things out in the desert that are very dangerous that we don't even consider. I carried that mace for a reason. I came across more rattlesnakes than I can tell you. I could sit in any given time outside my rig and see the tarantulas hopping through the, the people's campsites. And the spiders, <laughs> leave your chair out overnight. Just saying. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from this video. Take this knowledge and use it to your advantage. Because you know what? Being a victim does not bring crime upon you. Having a victim mentality or paranoid mentality doesn't make you a victim at all. What you own, what you have, makes you a victim to a really sick mind. And also, I want to address the comments from people, women and men. I've been out five years, ten years, twenty years. You guys don't fall for it. Because they've had some kind of issue somewhere down the line. And they're part of these super stations that want to keep you in la-la land. Handing out your views and your money. To fund their permanent vacations. Make your boondocking a lifestyle. Not a money making style. Anyway, have a great day. I'll see you next time. Remember to love yourself. We gotta love ourselves, you know what I mean?